Rashida Talib, right? She now suggests that Bill Maher's show should be canceled. It should be boycotted, right? These are the top. This is quote unquote what we call the tolerant left. So if you say something that they don't agree with, instead of them to have what we call, you know, a dialogue, a discussion, um, you know, battle of the wits, as we would say, they don't want to do that. They want to cut you off. That's it. Nobody listened to him. He's bad. Ooh, we. And well, that's not, not the way. Yeah, it's not the way, you know, Americans do it. It's not the way I believe, uh, you know, grown people have a discussion. Remember, on the night she won her election, in her now infamous, disgusting speech, which has been tweeted a thousand million times, she said two things. One, she was embarrassed that Trump was president because he uses bad language. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then, the next thing she said a few minutes later, with her children next to her, and I'm going to go to Washington, and the first thing I'm going to do when I get to Washington is impeach the mother effort. Now, besides the fact that it's crass and it's vulgar, she's now a member of Congress. And she said afterwards, and she was interviewed on national television, do you regret using those words? And she said, no, that's the way I talk. So... If you don't like the way I am, well, you're just a mother effer. And if you disagree with me, you're the enemy. And even Bill Maher, who is so far left on so many issues, Jermaine, I, I can't even see a molecule that I would agree with him on. <laughs> I swear. Called, he called her out. And so she said two things. First, that his show should be boycotted. The next thing she said, which has been out over the last several days this week, Jermaine, is HBO should cancel the show because HBO can't let somebody on their network who disagrees with Rashida Tlaib. Have you ever heard a sitting member of the House of Representatives say anything like that? That's outrageous. Outrageous. It's, oh my goodness, it's so far beyond normal and yet she still gets press every day. Here's something that's really interesting, and, and I wanted to make sure we got this in today. Maybe this is why she didn't go to Israel. There was an investigation into her trip. When you go on an official fact-finding trip, as a representative of the United States government, you don't pay. The government pays. So she could have gone all over the place and seen her grandmother as part of that, and it wouldn't have cost her a penny. But when she said, I'm not going to go on the official trip, and then she said, but I'm going to go on the MIFTA trip, but then Israel wouldn't let her come in because she previously had said she was going to meet with all these people which turned out not to be true. And what I mean by that is in her press release, in a press conference, she said, I'm going to meet with the government officials in Israel. I'm going to meet with military. I'm going to meet with NGOs. Then she released her itinerary. I, I'm astounded she did this because it, it made her out to be a liar 100%. In other words, in that public document that was created by MIFTA, it turns out MIFTA was paying for everything and it was going to be a terror trip. Mm, mm, mm. So she got banned. Then she said, okay, I'll just go see grandma. Government said, if you're just going personally, you're just going to see your grandmother, you have to pay for it. You can't accept MIFTA's money because that's a gift from a foreign organization and that's illegal for a member mm, yep. of to take. So maybe... Maybe that's why the sudden reversal, I'm guessing, because she would have had to pay for the trip herself, probably didn't want to. The whole speech about her poor grandmother crying and then Rashida Tlaib crying because she couldn't see her grandmother was all a lie because the grandmother was contacted by the Israelis and said, 
your granddaughter can come. And I've read the letter, it's been published. Rashida Tlaib was contacted by the Minister of Interior, I believe, and told, you can go, your trip is approved. And then she is the one that canceled it. And her public statement was she canceled it because Israel's a racist apartheid state and blah, 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 and women of color, blah, blah, blah. You know, insert um, accusatory racist <laughs> comment, you know, right? Use buzzword that makes people upset. Yeah. Let, let me read you her quote. She said, I'm not going, quote, because silencing me and treating me like a criminal is not what she, her grandmother, wants for me. It would kill a piece of me. I've decided that visiting my grandmother under these oppressive conditions stands against everything I believe in, fighting against racism, oppression, and injustice. You're skipping the part that Israel said yes, Rashida, and said you can go, Rashida, and you said no, not the other way around. There was no oppression, there is no racism, etc. There are more women in government in Israel than in the United States. There are more people of other religions in government than every country in the Middle East put together and added up, even though Israel is less than 1% of the population. So the racism is between Rashida Tlaib's ears, certainly not in Jerusalem, and certainly not in the state of Israel. And I hope that as people hear your show and they do some verification about what we're talking about, so they come to find out, as they say in the South, that what we're saying is true, that these are racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic, anti-Zionist statements that could lead to violence and advocate for violence, that maybe, just maybe, she doesn't have a long political career ahead of her because Americans want better for their country and they want better for their Congress and they certainly want a better reputation than having someone that hates so badly that this has become her mission. 